Hello, and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at every monarch's coinage portrait they've used on the coinage of their time. We will start off with our current monarch, Charles III, and work our way back in time to William the Conqueror. So, let's start. Here is King Charles III's coinage portrait. Designed by Martin Jennings, he's uncrowned and facing left, with the initials of the designer just below his neck on this portrait we see here. And now we will go back in time. This is the fifth portrait of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, designed by Jodie Clark. She's featured looking the opposite way and wearing a crown. This is the fourth portrait of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Going back even further, we now see the third portrait of Queen Elizabeth II, designed by Raphael McClough in this portrait here. The second portrait was designed by Arnold Machin and brought in for the new decimal coinage of the country. And the first coinage portrait of Queen Elizabeth II was done by Mary Gillock, and we see her here uncrowned. Queen Elizabeth II's father, George VI, was featured looking left, and the portrait was done by Humphrey Paget on all of his coins. Edward VIII never saw circulating coins because he abdicated, but this was his portrait that's used on some of the proof of record coins at the Royal Mint. The coinage of George V featured this portrait, featuring George V looking to the left. This was designed by Bertram McKennell. Here we see the portrait of Edward VII. Looking to his right, this portrait was designed by George William de Soules. Much like the late Queen, for a long reign came many portraits of Queen Victoria. This is her veiled head portrait, designed by Thomas Brock. Now we see her Jubilee head portrait, designed by Sir Joseph Edgar Boehm, and released for the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1887. This is a favourite among collectors. This is the Gothic head portrait of Queen Victoria, designed by William Wyon, another famous engraver. And he also designed this, the young head portrait of Queen Victoria, a classic design used on stamps and coinage at the time of Queen Victoria. William Wyon also designed this portrait, the portrait of William IV, who is facing right. This is the portrait of George IV and was designed by Benedito Pastrucci, another famous engraver at the Royal Mint back in the day. This is the portrait of George III, or at least the latest variant, and this was also designed by Benedito Pastrucci. You could see his whole last name under the neck there. Here is an earlier portrait of George III. This portrait is known as the Bullhead Portrait. Going further back in time, we see an even earlier portrait of George III. Now, he did approve this design, although it doesn't look very flattering from at least this angle. An even earlier portrait here is seen on the cartwheel penny and twopence, featuring King George III wearing a laureate wreath crown. And an earlier portrait here we see on a guinea, again features the king wearing a laureate wreath crown, rather than a metal or gold crown. Here is George II. His portrait was designed by John Crocker. He is facing left and once again wearing a laureate crown. Here is another portrait of George II that was used on larger style coins, featuring a bit more curly hair and some more detail within the design. And here is a coinage portrait that he was used on his gold coins, very similar to the last one for the silver coins, but it's cut higher up on his neck so we can't see any of his clothes. Here is a portrait of George I. This one was designed by John Crocker and was used on the copper and silver coinage of George I. And this portrait was used on the gold coinage of George I. A similar looking portrait, just enlarged on the coin. Here is a portrait of Queen Anne, facing to the left and wearing her hair up. It's a classical portrait for all Queen Anne coins. Now we go back to the time of William III. And here is his portrait. He is facing to the right and once again wearing a laureate crown. William also did co-rule with Queen Mary before this, and here is a double portrait of both monarchs on the coin. William's portrait is the same, and Queen Mary's portrait is behind his. Now we move back to the reign of James II, and here is his coinage portrait. Quite a striking one, in good quality, looks quite cool. And now for Charles II's coinage portrait. This is one used on his copper coins. Notice the way the portrait is facing, as Charles II was the last king to look different ways on his coinage before it was standardised to look left, right, left, right, monarch to monarch. Here is a portrait of him on the silver coinage looking the other way, and here is a portrait of him on hammered coinage looking the other way once again. Notice now he is wearing a crown in this portrait. That is the last time we see a king crowned on coinage. Here is a portrait of Charles I on his coins, and now, as we see, he is also crowned. This is a portrait of Charles I on some of his earlier gold coinage, a nice detailed portrait, and once again we see him crowned. This is a collector's favourite portrait of Charles I. He is crowned and holding his sword and sprig of leaves, and he looks very regal and ready for battle in this portrait, which many collectors like. Now then, on to James I. Here we see a shilling featuring the portrait of James I, and on the gold coins, James I looked um, 
very different, very Roman, and very inaccurate, perhaps. The coinage of Queen Elizabeth I is very common, and we see this portrait a lot. It is her facing to the left, wearing a crown, and one of the classical Tudor neck pieces at the time. Although Queen Mary I had quite a short reign, we do see her featuring on coinage, wearing the crown and a necklace. And now, as we enter the deeper, darker parts of hammered history coinage, we're going to speed up to get through these monarchs. So let's go. This is Edward VI, the boy king. As we can see here, the portrait captures his youth quite well. Here is a portrait of Henry VIII, a very famous king and very famous image of a monarch. Here is a portrait of Henry VII. He was the king who issued the first gold sovereign. Here is a portrait of Richard III. The best way to tell the monarchs apart now is to look in the top right part of the coin, as the portraits look the same, but their names are featured there. That portrait was Edward V, and this portrait here is Edward IV. Notice this one is a bit clipped. The name is at the top right of the coin. This one says Henry, and is in fact Henry VI. Again, looking very similar in portrait, as Henry V, who came before him. And this portrait here belongs to Henry IV. Here we see Richard II, and the name Richard is quite clear on this coin, and before him came Edward II. This coin is quite clipped around some parts. And before Edward II came Edward I, and here we can see his portrait. Now, before this was Henry III, and this portrait actually looks quite more like him and less like the others, as does this portrait here, this one featuring King John, the man who signed the Magna Carta. Here we see Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionheart. This portrait we see here is that of King Henry II, and like the others, he's holding a scepter. This portrait here is a portrait of King Stephen, who history tells was a bad king. This portrait here is that of Henry I, featuring him wearing a crown and holding the scepter. And this is a portrait of William II, which I'm assuming he looked better in person. And here we have it, the coin of William the Conqueror holding the scepter and facing to the left. That is all the monarch's portraits. So comment down below your favorite portrait of a monarch as we'd love to know. Also, please subscribe. This video took a lot of time to make and we'd really appreciate it if you were to take the time to subscribe. Goodbye for now and of course, a happy new year from Bits and Bobs.